As you are com comfortable, will you please rise. Thank you. 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we may sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the 22nd chapter of Luke. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Our drama this evening, what's love got to do with it? Attention all C4 personnel. There is a mandatory assignment meeting in Omega Hall at 2 p.m. Oh. 2.30. Well, maybe I can get a nap before I get to my next assignment. Oh, these are sure long days. Attention level C8 operators. Transport directions are now available at desk 17. Level C8. I, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. That puppy love stuff was pretty sad. Attention, V6 on duty supervisor. Please contact control desk 24. Does it cute? 
stupid corpse start at a C8? Yeah, and let me tell you, that is the bottom. Puppy love, nothing more, all day long. Seeking out kids who think they know what, what love is all about. It does have its advantages, though. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, kind of entertaining. You find them your subjects, shoot the arrows, and then sit back and watch. All of a sudden, their heart rate shoots up and they get all flustered and they start falling all over themselves. <laughs> and for what? For something that will last for a couple of months, maybe? Then back to where we started. I guess um, it's a living, but not much of a career and really not at all that fulfilling. So you got out of that. You bet I did. I worked hard and I took the placement exam when it came up. Did you know there are some C8s I started with who are still stuck down there? I guess they're satisfied with that. And God knows we need a bunch of them, but not me. So you moved up. I did, C7, you know. Getting people together who have some feelings for each other, but they just really enjoy hanging out together. Nothing serious, nothing lifelong. You know, a good, important relationship. That was fun. Go get some good friends together, good stuff. But then when I got a chance to move up to C4, I grabbed it. You skipped C5 and C6? You bet. C6 is a bit of a dead end. You work with people who think they are in love, but never get very deep. They usually don't handle the stress very well. A lot of turnover in that category. Just not for me. And C5 is pretty similar. Serious relationships, but they just aren't going to make it for the long haul. I don't know. I just think there's something deeper out there. So that's why I held out to get the C4. And you like that a lot. Oh, it's great. I'm working with people who are going to be serious in their relationship, and it will last. But it's going to take time. You know, they're going to have to do some uh, work, too. They really have to invest their, in their significant other. But it's going to pay off big for them. I love being a part of that life. Now, C3s, they have it easy. Just shoot some arrows, step back, and see it all unfold. No, I like the challenge for me and for them. And it's fun to check in later and see how far they've come. So what about a C2 or a C1? I hear those are really tough to get into, but pretty rewarding work. Oh yeah. I've got a close friend who's a C1, and she goes after the single people who will adopt special needs, a special needs child. Think about it. Without a spouse, Adopting a child who needs lots of love and care and doing it all by themselves. Not many of them, but wow, is that great stuff. What a love that is. A lot, of different, a lot different than the love we usually work with. Take someone special to make that work. C2, they're good too. They target, they target people who for some reason become close friends with someone who has challenges. You know, like someone who has no friends or lacks social skills, or maybe has some physical or emotional challenges, maybe a little slow, whatever. They need friends too. I always wondered how they got connected. That's us. And that's why many of those folk end up in a friendship with someone they never would have imagined but there it is. <laughs> if only they knew, they never feel the arrow. <laughs> the one thing that troubles me though is that some people never seem to get any arrow. I can't explain it, and it hurts a lot. What about those in, what about the people who never find the right person? Or those who end up in a relationship 
that becomes very painful and maybe even breaks down. Or the person who loses a loved one, especially at a young age, then has to go through the grief and sorrow. What about them? Yeah, I, I run into them. A lot of those. A lot of pain. Not many answers. I sure wish I had answers for them. I bring love to so many people, but I just wonder about those who never get any, get the love they want. Um, oh my, I think wrapped up in my story. What about you? What have you been up to all these years? Weren't you assigned to the records division? I was, and I stayed there for a while. It wasn't bad, but it got kind of slow. I got to watch history unfold, keep track of what's happening, and document a lot. Okay, I, I guess, but I too thought that there had to be something missing. So I started to look around. Then I heard of some openings in the messenger division. At least it would get me out and about. An errand boy? I suppose that's something, but I always thought you had the potential for greatness. I mean, you aced all the exams. Yeah, I figured on five, maybe 10,000 years tops, then I'd move on. I even thought float pool would be okay, lots of variety, never step in one place, but... Mm. Don't tell me you really liked it. Well, yeah. It got me out of the building and I got to see the world, literally. I mean, I have been everywhere, kind of like you. And like you, I became to realize that I did some pretty significant work. What do you mean? Well, I'm an M3. I get to do some regular routine stuff, pretty basic messages. I don't get to make big pronouncements. I work with everyday people. So remember, you said you wondered about people who never find love, who yearn for something that doesn't come their way? Yeah. I get to come to them. I get to share a message with them, a message of hope that they aren't alone, that God is still with them, and that they are loved. Not the way they wanted or expected, but they are loved by God. My message doesn't bring an instant smile to their face. They don't just suddenly get it and think that all is well, but a lot of times I can see it in them. Just a glimmer of hope. Hope that in some time, nurtured by powers far greater than me, you know, the Holy Spirit, they will see God's hand at work in their lives. Anyway, there's one mess there anyway, there's one message I share. Wow, that's pretty heavy. But how do you do that? Do you show up in front of them, you know, and the glory of God shining around them and all that? Well, no, I'm usually just a quiet voice in the back of their mind. I whisper a word, give a gentle stroke, and then the Holy Spirit does the work. And that's a good thing because there are a lot of hurry people out there. Oh, hey, I don't, don't I know it. A lot of them wish they had someone to hold them, and instead they feel so alone. Yeah, and then sometimes I'm off to those who have lost a loved one a different kind of loneliness. I get to share with them some comfort, some courage, some hope. And then there are those who are frightened, or those who are trying to be something new, whose lives are changing. I get to visit a lot of folks who really need me to be there. No, they don't need me. They need the message that I bring them. 
I am so glad I ran into you. You gave me some hope that those I worry about aren't forgotten. That those who don't get an arrow still get something, maybe even something more important. They get Jesus. That's really what I bring to them. Or I guess, more properly, I let them know that Jesus has them and that Jesus is hanging on to them even when they're feeling very much alone and abandoned. So, but of all of my visits, one really stands out. Oh, do tell. Well, you know, of course, that angels are pretty prominent in the resurrection story. Archangel Gabriel rolls the stone away from the tomb, and then Ereton and Zephiel go to share the news with the women. I would have given anything for that assignment, but there was no way I was getting that, not an M3. So what happened? Well, on the day before Easter, I got word that I was on for Easter morning. Show up at 4 a.m. and get my assignment. I got to the assignment desk and there was a bunch of us, mostly M3s, but a few M2s as well. There was a buzz around the room. We all knew that this was the most important morning in history. And we were there, a part of all of this. In the next room, we could see Gabriel, Ariton, and Zaphiel getting their last minute instructions. I heard the supervisor getting out the assignments to my group. Some were going to some of the women who followed Jesus, some to the disciples, and Cassiel, she got the best a message of encouragement and hope for Mary, the mother of Jesus. Me, I got to go to Nova. Nova? What is that? Well, that's what I wanted to know. They, we were on the verge of human and divine mystery. And I was being sent off to a nobody. I think the supervisor saw how stunned I was, so she pulled me aside and said to me, really, this is important. I've done this before, so what's this, what, why is this so special? Because, she says, this is the mother of Dismas. Wait, the Dismas? That's right. Dismas the thief on the cross who asked Jesus to remember him. There I was on the morning of Easter, planting a seed of hope in the mother of a thief. That the promise Jesus made to him when he was on the cross wasn't just a bunch of empty words. I could be a part of renewing life, even as God was bringing dismiss into everlasting life. What a great story. Something I'll never forget. I got to be a part of someone's experience of the greatest loves. The love of the crucified, now risen Jesus, and to help make the whole crucifixion, crucif crucifixion and resurrection real in, my, in her life. To make it completely relevant to where she was. To make a real difference in her life, right then and there. Talk about a deep and profound moment. There it was. Wow, God's love, isn't it awesome? We both, and we both get to be a part of it? I get to help others discover how God's love fills their emptiness with the gift of another person and with the person's love. Love that is really God's gift. And you get to share the ultimate love, the love of Jesus giving life and hope. Did you think when we graduated Angel Academy that we'd ever reach these heights? I had dreams of glory and grandeur and lots of drunkenness. Instead, we get to share love and life. Can't get any better than that. Nope, not at all.
attention all C4 personnel. Assignment meeting begins in five minutes <coughs> in the Mega Hall. That's me. Oh, I really need to fly. Uh, hey, it's been great seeing you. Let's get together again. Uh, but not in another 20,000 years. You bet. You take care of yourself and keep shooting those arrows. <laughs> I will, and you keep sharing the good news. A reading from the third chapter of John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. As you are comfortable, would you please rise as we sing hymn number 666. 666.